Ever heard of a lumbar puncture? What about an epidural? Yup, we're talking about a doctor sticking a massive needle in someone's spine. And although a great many horror films would suggest otherwise, the doctors are not out to get you. They know what they're doing, and they're actually not even touching your spinal cord when they prick you in the back. Want to know how that's possible? Stay with us to find out while we investigate the interrelationships of the vertebral column and the spinal nerves. So what are we going to talk about in this tutorial? Our main aim is to understand the relationship between the spinal nerves and the vertebral column. First of all, we'll have a look at different vertebral regions and the general skeletal side of things. We'll then move on to the spinal cord, run through a few features, and see how the spinal nerves anatomically relate to the vertebral column. We'll also focus on the spinal cord's position in the vertebral column and how that is influenced by fetal development. Then we'll discuss the meningeal coverings of the spinal cord as they too develop quite an interesting pattern due to the changes during fetal development. Finally, we'll take a look at some clinical notes and wrap up for the day. Let's jump right in and learn about the vertebral column. The quicker we start, the sooner we'll finish. So when you think of the vertebral column, or the spine, you probably imagine something a little like what you can see on your screen right now. Well, why don't we take a bit of a different spin on it and look at the mid-sagittal section instead? Much better. This makes it a lot easier to understand how the vertebral column relates to other structures. But before we study any of these interrelationships, let's look at the different regions of the spine. You probably already know that there are five distinct regions, which can be identified by the different characteristics of their vertebrae. Starting most superiorly, we find seven cervical vertebrae in the neck. Right below it are 12 thoracic vertebrae, which span the thorax. Lower still, in the lower back, we find the lumbar spine with its five lumbar vertebrae. And it is followed by five sacral vertebrae, which are normally fused into one bone called the sacrum. Right at the inferior tip of the vertebral column is a funny little structure called the coccyx, also known as the tailbone. It consists of three to five coccygeal vertebrae fused to a variable extent. Together, these 33 vertebrae form the vertebral column, which stretches from the foramen magnum superiorly right to the tip of the coccyx inferiorly. Something that you always need to keep in mind when learning about the vertebral column are the intervertebral discs between each vertebra, but their structure and function are discussed in more detail in some of our other tutorials. And that's the bony elements of this tutorial pretty much covered. That was easy, wasn't it? Now let's turn our attention to the basic gross anatomy of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a long cylindrical structure which starts off as an extension of the medulla oblongata of the brainstem and occupies the vertebral canal along much of the vertebral column. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.